Welcome to the Video Dictionary, where we explore the language we use every day, one word at a time. My name is Benjamin Lewis, and today I want to take a look at the book. Well, at the word book, to be exact. The word's origins are simple, but I think it's very interesting where that word comes from. Book. Noun. A fairly long document, usually recorded in text, but sometimes containing images or even audio. It can also refer to a stack of paper bound together along one side, usually with a cover made of a heavier material. History and etymology. In the beginning, there was clay. Clay tablets used by the Sumerians to record cuneiform text. Soft clay made it easy to make imprints with a stylus, and the writing could be easily erased. When the clay was baked, it created a far more permanent method of recording text. As technology progressed, the Greeks began using wood tablets coated in wax as a temporary writing surface because it could be erased in a very similar way by smoothing the surface of the wax. And the wood and wax was a, an improvement over the clay tablets because the weight was greatly reduced. Centuries later, the Vikings adopted the alphabet from the Romans, and they adapted this alphabet in such a way that made it easier to carve into rough-hewn wood. We call this style of letters runes. Now, much has been said about the magical attributes of these characters, but their main use was much more mundane. They were used for labeling, and sending short messages back and forth on small pieces of wood. Usually, these planks of wood with runes on them were used for labeling or sending short messages to one another. And once the messages were read, or no longer needed, it could be shaved and the plank could be reused for a new message. These were what we call rune sticks. Throughout the Germanic and Norse world, the word for wood was something similar to bokeh. Interestingly enough, that's the origin of the words beech, as in beech tree, oak, and even buckwheat. And all the way back to Proto-Indo-European, the word was beko. So, as time went on, Anything that was used for recording runes or text was called something like bok in Old Frisian and Old Saxon, or buok in Old Dutch. and many other Germanic languages, the words are very similar. Even the Gothic language has the word boka to refer to letters in the alphabet. And so... In English, that's where we get the word book. Prescription and commentary. So, looking at the history of the word book, we can see that these things called books have gone through many, many steps and been many things. Starting as clay tablets, wax tablets, and even the papyrus scrolls from Egypt and all that, that kind of stuff. I was trying to come up with what made a book a book. And it's no longer just, I mean, it used to be just a stack of paper bound together on one side so it could be thumbed through quickly and easily. But I think the definition is, that's still one definition of the word that I did include in mine at the beginning of this episode. But I think that it's changed to the point where a lot of stuff can be considered a book. Like an ebook, you can just refer to those as a book. So I'm reading something on my Kindle. I'm reading a book on my Kindle. Or I'm reading a book on my phone. And that's why I included that it's a long document that contains usually text or images, and at this point, 
I think we can say that books can contain audio as well. We're moving into a an era where you can listen to books. And, I mean, I've stopped referring to them as audiobooks. I'll tell people, yeah, I'm listening to... Well, right now I'm listening to The Moon is a Harsh Mistress by Robert Heinlein. Great book, by the way. And... I'll, sometimes I'll even tell people I'm just reading that book when I'm actually listening to it, but I don't even refer to it as an audiobook. I'm, I'll tell them I'm listening to a book. I've completely dropped the word audiobook from the beginning because I don't really think for most people it needs to be said anymore. And I've noticed other people talk to me the same way. And this is the job of a lexicographer is to find out how people are using words and report on that. And that's what a dictionary is, is how people commonly use the words. And I think the book, the word book has now come to include pretty much any long document that contains text, images, or audio at this point. And that's where I came up with my definition for the word. And I, I think it really has expanded out to that point and to have that meaning. So thank you for watching and thank you for your patience with me this month. I've been trying to get something a little bit more spectacular ready for my one year anniversary on YouTube and most of it seemed to not come together in time. But when you're asking people to work for free you can't expect very much. But as you see from the new backdrops in this I'm having a set built. I'm hoping to have animated fly-throughs and maybe some intros created for each segment um, done in this set. So I wanted to have that ready for the one year anniversary, but not quite. So thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this content, please leave, leave a like and make sure you subscribe and click the little bell so you never miss a word. If you really want to help support this project and motivate me to make more or help me pay someone to uh, create better graphics and higher production value for these videos, um, please consider going over to patreon.com slash lexicographer. The link will be in the video description below. So, thank you for watching. Hope you've enjoyed. And until next time, keep on learning. <laughs>